the 20th century product of 250 years breeding of the thoroughbred horse. At 11 years old, I think Topville makes impact by his great presence allied to his substance and elegance. They are horses that are bred generation after generation of big winners. And they have cost millions, some of them. Working class like us could never afford to get into the sport the same way as they do. But I couldn't see any reason why it couldn't be done. Just need something as cheap and cheerful, I thought. I was like everyone else, didn't think that she could do it. And you know, and phoned these people that we knew in Landailo and asked them if they knew anyone who had a thoroughbred mare for sale. And they put us onto this boy in Lenethley. There was a young lad, he had a mare. Her name was Rubel and he wanted a thousand pound for it. I said, oh, this is lovely, this is. I said, she, got a, she had a few scars on her legs where he had run into a fence or something with her. So keep your trap shut, I said, and I'll do the talking. I said, look at her legs all covered in scars. I said, it's not worth a thousand pound. So he said, well, what will you give me? I said, I'll give you 300 pound. He said, all right then. Well, I'd walk to Timbuktu if I thought I was going to have a ride on a horse. That's how me and Janet met, through the horses. I was in college at the time and I'd get off the bus in the main street in Blackwood and he'd be there with the horse and cart and he used to say, come on, get on. I used to rag and bone for a couple of bob, so I used to wear an old bowler hat, wellies, and a donkey coat with the sleeves cut out and string looked like when he stepped up. And as soon as I got on, he would start shouting rag and bone. Oh, he was a nightmare, he was, a nightmare. Rag bone, any old liars, toys for babies, balloons for ladies, stop them having little babies, rag bone. When I look back, I do wonder how I fancied him. <laughs> I knew horses, Brian wouldn't say no, but he was working on Howard. I thought, yeah, he's the one I've got to work on. I was back at the club and down it came with a thump. What do I do now? And of course I bought the mare, I had all the paperwork, I had the pedigree, I had everything. Well, he went white, because of course he'd had problems before and he had promised Angela, that's his wife, that he wouldn't get involved again, but I wasn't having any of it. Rubel never actually won a race. You wouldn't have given her a second look. You know, she was just an ordinary looking mare. She was middle-aged. She was pretty, but she was also pretty chubby. During her racing career, which wasn't very long, she tried to kill every jockey that sat on her. She would rather run into a brick wall than jump it. It got to the point where they, nobody would ride her because she was just mental. I think Jan came along at probably exactly the right time to get me interested. I was having a bad time in work. I was in my mid-40s. And after 15 years, I'd had enough for working for the biggest firm on the planet in accountancy. And I phoned in and said, I'm not coming back. And I resigned. And then I went and did my own thing for a few years, which didn't work out. It's just that he's always loved horse racing. Just to breed his own horse, see it run on a track. It's just, it has always been his dream. And he thought he's lost the dream, but this was his chance to get it back. 
we sat down one evening and he said, it really will not cost us any money this time. And I said, you're right there, it certainly will not. I think probably the attraction was that it couldn't be done initially. You know, we just can't do this. Uh, and then, of course, that's the attraction, isn't it? Once it was the roller coaster was, was going, he was right. Yeah, there was no turning back then. I had him hook, hook, line and sinker. 